Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we will be discussing about solving real life problems involving fractions, decimals, and percentages. Mathematics is everywhere. You can do it. So hello everyone. How are you today? I hope you are doing well So in today's video, we will be discussing about the Real-life situations where fractions decimals and percentages are applied So let's start with the pretest so you can use your notebook or activity notebook to solve the following problems. Let's start with number one. The number of students who enrolled in ABM is 300. If one third of the population are girls, how many boys enrolled in ABM? Is it letter A, 100, B, 150, C, 200, letter D, 250? Okay, let us proceed to number two. Mary bought a pie of pizza and divided it into four slices. She ate three slices of it. How many percent of the pizza did Mary eat? Is it letter A, 37.50%, B, 50%, C, 75%, D, 100%. Okay, let's proceed to the last number, number three. Anna is making hot cakes that requires three-fourths of a kilogram. If she buys in a store whose weighing scale is expressed in decimal numbers, what will she tell the sales lady? Letter A, 3.4 kilograms, B, 1 kilogram, C, 75 kilogram, and D, 0 0.75 kilogram. Okay, so just try answering that one. And later on, after this video lesson, you will know the answer. We'll check if your answers in this pretest is correct or are correct. Okay, so what you need to know. Now, Swinson in 2018 18, mentioned, again, Swinson in 2018 mentioned a proven step-by-step -step method in solving word problems that is actually quite simple and below are the following let's start number one we have read the problem out loud to yourself so learners or students you have it you have a tendency to rush through every problem due to the time limit given by your teacher for a particular problem now if you do not know what the problem is asking then you cannot solve the problem correctly so when the learners or when you uh, read the problem aloud you are saying and hearing the problem so you can form a clearer picture in the head and you are more prepared to solve it so that is read the problem out loud to yourself that is the advantage okay now let us proceed to number two Okay, number two, draw a picture. Now, learners need to visualize a problem to understand it, especially younger learners. As they get older, they can start to visualize in their head, but at a young age, they should be drawing out a picture that explains to them what the problem is all about. The picture should take into account of all the aspects of the problem. So that is draw a picture. It will help us to visualize the problem. The third one is think what do I need to find? Okay, think what do I need to find? You have here some word problems are straightforward with your questions. You will going to ask your uh, self like what is being asked? Like it can be simple as like Molly has two dogs. Jason has three. How many dogs do Molly and Jason have together? Now, there are also problems that you need to think about. Therefore, you can solve it. 
Okay. Let's proceed to number four. Okay. Number four, you have here list what is given. Now, it is always good to start with listing the things you know. If you try to solve the problem without knowing what tools you are given to solve it, you will not get the right answer. Now, think about the last time you tried to fill in the blanks or assume an answer without knowing all the facts. Your outcome probably did not turn out well. It is for the reason that we need to list what is given before any problem. Now, you should write it down at the tip or side of the scrap paper so they always have it as a reference when doing the problem. Okay. And number five, you have there, find the keywords. Keywords. So what do you mean by that? Now, every word problem has keywords to look out for that tell you what operation to do or to use. As you get more practice with word problems, finding the keywords will get easier. Now, here are some of the most popular keywords for word problems. Now, let's try to look at the most popular keywords that will help us to solve word problems. No, we have, it composes of two columns. You have for the operation and the first column and the keywords in the second column. So, let's start with addition. The keywords would be all together, both, combined, total, and additional. So, if you have seen these keywords in a problem so meaning to say it would tell you to use the operation addition okay let us proceed subtraction so what are the keywords under the operation subtraction you have their decrease difference fewer how many more how much greater or have left remain okay now, let us proceed to multiplication. These are the keywords under operation multiplication. Doubled or tripled, each, equal groups, in all, of, per, and total. There are still more, but these are just the common or the most popular keywords that has been used in word problems. Now, let us proceed to division. For division, you have the keywords as, such as equal parts, split between, separated, and present. Okay. Now, how about number six? After identifying the operation that you're going to use, you have here the next step to do is solve the problem using the appropriate operation from the table in the previous slide. Okay, so you will just simply apply the accurate, the appropriate, I mean, the appropriate uh, operation that we're going to use in that word problem. Now, for number seven, you have there, check your work. So, most of the time, students tend not to check your answer if, as to whether or not it's correct or is correct or not. Like... You have here, check your work. This is the last step, of course, is to check your work by seeing if the answer fits the question asked, meaning you need to review. Mathematically, we can check our work by doing the opposite of whatever operation we use. Okay. And always remember that these seven simple steps will help you better understand word problems and CBN, the complicated words. Okay, so I hope you understand the seven and you will be guided with the seven steps in solving word problems. Okay, so at this point, we're going to have illustrative examples. Okay, let's start with example number one. We have here the incense mosquito killer cost 25 pesos. If the profit is 40%, what should be the selling price of the said mosquito killer? 
Okay. So, we are going to analyze the problem. We are going to write the given. You have here, the cost of the incense mosquito killer is 25 pesos. The question is, if the profit is 40%, then the selling price is 140% of the original price. That is, it will give us an idea that the selling pr price would be 140% of original price. Remember, you know already how to convert percent into decimal form. So we're going to apply that. So we have here 140% into decimal form. You got it 1.4. And the original price is 25. You will just simply multiply 25 by 1.4. And the answer would be 35 pesos. Therefore, the ceiling price should be 35 pesos in order to have a 40% profit of the incense mosquito killer. I hope you got it. Okay, let us proceed to example number two. Okay, Glacy was asked to buy pots of her mother's new plants. Now, she was given 160 pesos to buy pots that cost 25 pesos each. Now, how many pots can Glacy buy from the money that she has? Now, let's have the solution. Given is 160 pesos to buy pots that cost 25 pesos each. Then, we have 160 divided by 25. And that will give us 6.4. Hence, Glacy can only buy 6 pots which will cost 150 pesos. She can still return 10 pesos to her mother as a change. So why only 6 pots? Because it's a decimal number. The answer is 6.4. And we cannot buy half part of the pot, right? So... We'll just use our common sense that we are going to uh, convert this decimal into a whole number because we're talking about the number of facts. Okay. Let's proceed to example number three. Okay. Example number three, we have Glazer tutors his friend and earned... 155 pesos for every two hours. If he spent five and one half hours in tutoring, how much should he earn? Okay, so let us proceed to the solution. Given 155 pesos for every two hours, that is 77.50 per hour. Thus, you have 77.5 times 5.5 so you have 426.25 okay so therefore Glazer should earn 426.25 in five and one half hours of shortery uh -huh. You might be asking why is it that we use 77.5 as per hour? It is because in the first statement, you have there since it's 155 pesos for every two hours, meaning we'll divide 155 by 2, that will give us the rate for every hour. Okay, so I think we are now ready for the post test with these three examples. Let's proceed. Okay, let's have an assessment. So, number one, solve the following word problems. Show your solutions in your activity notebook. You will have five points each and make sure that... Um, 
you will answer the problem completely. Okay? With units. Number one. One way to make your body healthy is to drink enough water every day. Your goal is to drink at least eight glasses. You are using your 750 ml tumbler that your teacher gave you that is equivalent to five glasses of water. Now, how many percent of water do you need to drink after consuming one bottle? Number two. Your place doesn't have an internet connection and your mobile data is very poor. You need to research for your assignment in the internet. An internet, an internet cafe costs 5 pesos per 20 minutes. If you spend one and one half hours in the cafe, how much do you need to pay? Next, number three. Your classmate is aiming to be an honor student. If her average in the eighth subject is 93.375, what should be his minimum grade for the last subject for him to reach uh, with high honors? Number four. Recently, the government is implementing the no back riding policy. There is an estimated number of 7,500 motorists in your barangay. If only 70% of the motorists obeyed the said policy, how many of them are in danger of getting caught or getting caught up by the law enforcers? Okay. So now, as you... As you can see, you have there the answers during your pre-test for you to check if your answers are correct. For number one, that's letter C. For number two, letter C again. And number three is letter D. So I hope that you learned something in, our, in today's video. And before I'm going to end this video, let's have a code. Mathematics is not about numbers, equations computations or algorithms it is about understanding so thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe my channel bye